Hey guys, Multiclassic Gamer here. Welcome to the finale of Let's Play SpongeBob SquarePants ba uh, Revenge of the Flying Dutchman on PlayStation 2. We have made it all the way up to the Dutchman's ship. It's no Dutchman stew or a roll out of barrel, but it's still the Dutchman's ship regardless. We've made it all the way up here, and now it's time to rescue SpongeBob's friends. Let's do this. Hello. So in the GPA version, it took place mostly inside the Dutchman ship and we went, th we went through exploring and trying to find SpongeBob's friends. And that would be the case if we could go inside the Dutchman ship here, but unfortunately, we can't. Of course, it'd be cool to see what's inside with Boundary Break, but I think actually we can kind of get a glimpse of it here, actually, sort of. Can we? Oh yeah, we can. And there's nothing back there. Nothing. Just an empty, like it's empty back there. No wall or anything. Okay. Well, that solves that issue. But anyways, the last of the Dutchman's doubloons are actually here. And interestingly enough, this is where honestly the biggest difference between the PS2 and the GameCube version are. And that is the placement of Mr. Krabs. Of all things, that is the major biggest difference uh, gameplay wise between this version and the, and the GameCube version. You see, in the PlayStation 2 version, the Dutchman's mast is actually like rotating here as you can see and actually makes it a little challenging to get these last few doubloons here but not only that but there's also an extra dinghy to the left of the ship and that's where Mr. Krabs is but in the Genki version which came a month later they moved Mr. Krabs up to the second crow's nest way up there why they did that I have no idea, but that's one of the biggest changes between the GameCube version and the PS2, well, the PS2 and the GameCube version. Again, you gotta keep in mind the PlayStation 2, ver PlayStation 2 version came first. So, yeah, it's one of the major differences here. We also have uh, Patrick here. Uh, we're, we'll rescue SpongeBob's friends here in a second, but first we want to uh, go around and pick up all these doubloons first. So I want to see if my theory is right that the total amount of doubloons is uh, 1,659. Now that it turns out that there's actually 266 and Jellyfish fails to have what I thought was 267. So, yeah. And all these doubloons first. And again, it's kind of difficult because the mass actually rotates right here. And it doesn't do that in the GameCube version. It's uh, stationary in the Game GameCube version. So, yeah. But uh, essentially, just like in the GameCube version, uh, there is a flying... Uh, magical dinghy that flies around the Dutchman ship or or actually practically orbits around it basically and it's using that dinghy you're going to rescue SpongeBob's friends okay now there we go just trying to pick up these doubloons for crap uh, I hate how the camera changes though because like yeah this is where the dinghy where Mr. Krabs is hanging, is hanging out at and for some reason they feel the need to change the camera so that it's kind of throws you off actually when you're getting onto the dinghy. Okay, here we go. So yeah, this uh this last bloom right here is actually very, very annoying because it's just outside of the mast. You actually have to jump around the mast in order to get to on top of making it to the, the end of that uh, this uh, pole here that supports the mast. So, yeah, it's one of the more annoying uh, doubloons to get to. All right, so let's get the rest of the doubloons around here, around the Dutchman's ship. It's very possible that there are a different number of doubloons in the Dutchman ship in this version than there are in the GameCube version, but I'm not entirely sure on that, honestly. Even after doing that practice run, because I didn't pay full attention, but we'll see. But so far, it's looking to be about the same, actually. Okay, so it's, uh... Yeah, we know that uh, Squidward's on the deck of the ship. Gary's on the... Uh, the... The, uh, whatchamacallit, the, the... Not the mast, the, uh... The plow, of the, or the prow of the ship. And Sandy, just like before, is up here. So no surprise there. Finally, the last four doubloons are over there. So yeah, there's actually one more doubloon, I think. Maybe I, just my count was, yeah, actually I think my count was off in the 
GameCube version. It's actually 175 here. So, yeah, there are 1,660 doubloons. I was just one doubloon off in Jellyfish Fields for whatever reason. So that's 175. No, 176, actually. Yeah, I said 100. Oh, okay. So it's 176, because it's one next to uh, Patrick, but we're not going to be able to get that one without talking to Patrick. So either way, that's all the doubloons of the game. Except for one. So there's 1,661, actually. Very, very odd number, but yeah, that's how many there are. All right, let's talk to Gary, first of all. Quick, Gary, over the side! <laughs> Magical flying snail activates. Yeah, they pretty much do that with all SpongeBob friends, except for one. One SpongeBob friend that does not fly, at least as far as we can see. And he's right here. What took you so long, SpongeBob? He just walks off and teleports onto the dinghy. Literally. Go scorch you with your teleportation powers. Alright. Next up we have the biggest change in the PS2 version and the Genki version, Mr. Krabs. Nice going, SpongeBob! try there. They didn't even try. Not that I could do any better, honestly, but still. Okay. Yeah, Dingy, you think you're so special to have to be present only in the PS2 version and also to have your own camera, let alone that. Oh, uh, but I liked being a pirate. You didn't like being a pirate in the Game Boy Advance version? What happened, Patrick? I guess he changed his mind since then. Alright, and finally... The last, but certainly not least, Brian to SpongeBob's to rescue, Sandy. Make your way up to the winding steps of the, well, not step, well, yeah, kind of steps, I guess, now. Hey, Sandy! Guess what? You're the last friend to rescue. Go get him, SpongeBob! What? Apparently the last one to hover, too. I guess she's a flying squirrel, so it makes sense there. <laughs> Well, well. So you've got my old flying dinghy over the side and all your friends onto it. But at least you won't get away from me. You'll be my cabin boy from now until the seas dry up. Give it up, Dutchman. Your haunting nights are numbered. I'll wipe the deck with you, Sponge. Psst. Hello? I do not recommend that you antagonize him right now. Ah, uh, who's afraid of the big bad Dutchman? You don't understand. The book you borrowed from Squidward was not completely accurate. In fact, it was a little out of date. Uh -oh. According to the new edition, the treasures you gathered have made you mostly immune to the Dutchman's powers, but not completely immune. So be ready for a tough fight. Uh, <laughs> I'm not ready. I'm not ready. You don't stand a chance, Squarepants. This is it, the final battle of the game with the Flying Dutchman, of course, who also been the final boss of the game. Plankton? Uh, I don't think so. So, first thing you gotta do is avoid the Dutchman's uh, nostril flare move, just like in the GBA version. But this time, yeah, the battle's a lot easier and a lot more of a cakewalk than the GBA version, I will admit that. So basically all you do is just gotta wait for the, him to drop down these bombs. And after that, you can then toss one of them at the Dutchman. That's all you gotta do. Otherwise, just avoid the Dutchman and wait for him to drop the bombs again. So yeah, nothing special there. Now, it's practically uh, impossible to avoid the Dutchman's portal until he stops there. It's, well, I mean, it's like it's possible, but like you're not going to get very far away from it, so you just got to go right there. We'll do that about three times, and he'll go back to his nostril player move. Come on, Dutchman, you can do a lot better than that. I saw what you can do in Shanghai. Don't hide what you can do. Alright, time for the second hit. Literally, it's just three hits, too, so it couldn't be any easier than that. Thanks for ammunition, Dutchman. Seriously, what else are we planning on doing with these bombs? Honestly, Dutchman, I was more impressed with your dialogue in Super Sponge PS1. Even then, it was just repeated recycled dialogue from the uh, 
Uh, scaredy pants, so... What's funny is he can actually use them to kill off these uh, skeletons. Like, he actually kills off his own minions. It's, it's pretty funny. I always love that. Just make him kill off his own minions. Come on, Dutchman. Kill your minions. Kill your minions. Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. Maybe I can just kill him myself. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, yeah, I guess you can kill him too. Okay. Whatever. Not that it matters, though, because we got the very last hit right here. Of course, we got one skeleton to avoid, but whatever. What difference does that make? Alright, Dutchman, it's over. Oof. 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 Where are we going now, SpongeBob? I don't know, Patrick. What do you think, Mr. Krabs? To the Krusty Krab, everyone! For a feast like no other! Oh, Mr. Krabs, I'm so happy! Yee-haw! That's what I call a celebration. Yay! <laughs> of course, uh, you know this is coming out of your paychecks. I love how they linger on that very last shot of the gameplay, like of the on Dutchman's bottle, as if there's gonna be like a sequel or something. So, yeah, that's the uh, console version of Revenge of the Flying Dutchman again. So, yeah, not really much to say, honestly. Uh, I will admit that the GBA version is the superior game, after all. Like it's it's superior to the console version, which is very rare for me to you know say for any multi-platform release of a SpongeBob game. But yeah, the GBA version is really hard to live up to. It's a really great SpongeBob game. So uh, honestly, I'm, it's not surprising I find it better than this one. But I also have a special a special place in my heart for the console version. I always will because it's my first. It's one of my, one of the first console games in general that I grew up playing. It's the first it's one of the first Sponge. It's one of the first SpongeBob games I ever owned. It's one of the first games I own. Period. So of course we have a special place in my heart always for this version. And. Uh, you know, as long as the PS2 version continues to run perfectly without any issues, I'm going to continue to play this version instead of the GameCube version. So, but yeah, it's also, you know, we can't forget that this is the very last game that uh, Big Sky Interactive made, so. And I will admit, yeah, overall the game as a, as a product, this game is pretty average. And uh, for being SpongeBob's first 3D adventure, it's actually kind of disappointing. But they totally make up for it with the very next game. Not that it was made by the same devs, but you know what I mean. Um, it should be no surprise at all. The very next game on in the marathon is Battle for Bikini Bomb on Xbox. So that's going to be coming up uh, next time. Uh, again, I'm recording this advance. So I don't know what day it's going to be, but you guys will know by the time we get there. So yeah, be excited, y'all. That, that's coming the day after tomorrow. But in the meantime... Uh, we do have some bonus content to show with this game, so we're not quite done yet. There's, uh, still the art gallery. I haven't looked at it yet for the PS2 version, so it could be a little different. I do know that there are some things in the Extras Mini that are different in the PS2 version, but, uh, it's nothing I can show. It's just game trailers, which I can't show on here for copyright reasons, but either way. Uh, but yeah, as a whole, this game is just, it's average, critically. I will admit that, because, like... Basically, the the biggest pro biggest issue is that these worlds are too big. Basically, they're too big, and there's not not enough to fill them up. Basically, it's not enough to keep you occupied or anything. So, but from what I heard, this game actually is better than the Jimmy Neutron game that the, that they also made in the year prior. So, I don't know. I guess I'll try that. We'll we'll, cr we'll cross that bridge when we get around to that game. But now, hey, there's Steven Hillenburg. Alright, that's it for the credits. Oh, interesting, the music actually comes automatically back on anytime you go to the main menu, but that's okay, I don't mind that. So, anyways, off to the extras menu. Now, there's a DVD trailer that plays right here. This DVD trailer is for, um... So basically, this trailer is a trailer for, um, the DVD and VHS versions of Nautical Nonsense and Sponge Buddies. So there's basically mostly season one and two episodes on, you know, DVD and VHS. So, I mean, the DVD trailer thing is kind of a mis misleader because it's also advertising uh, VHS copies. But whatever. 
Either way, that's what that is, and I can't show it for copyright reasons. But there's also this theme song here. Now, this plays automatically whenever you boot up the game, and you can skip it, but it's still there. It's the theme song of the of the show. Actually, it's the intro, but it's not the exact same theme song. It's actually a cover of the theme song, and you actually hear this cover in Battle for Wiki Bomb. Now, this cover is also an Employee of the Month, and also and it shows the show's intro as it is, like as it originally is. It shows that in both Employee Month and this game, too. But... When I tried to show that with the Employee of the Month episode 1, uh, my original upload of that episode got copyright claims by Viacom because it showed the intro. They weren't claiming like the cover of the the theme song, they were just cut they were just uh, uh claiming the the visuals basically of the show's intro. They claimed it as Karate Choppers interestingly, but it wasn't you know, there was no footage of the actual episode there, which is kind of weird, but whatever. So for that reason, I couldn't show that co that theme song in either this or Employee of the Month because of that copyright claim. But you'll be hearing it in Battle Freaky Bomb because that's how the game starts. So with that, uh, next up we have Hints and Tips. Now I also can't show this because... Well, actually, I think I can because... Uh, I think I showed it in the extras menu, actually, in the original... Uh, we'll go ahead and watch it. Now we already know how to do all pretty much everyone. We know how to do pretty much all these tricks and hints that they're showing on screen, but I think what's more interesting is the uh, beta footage we see of the game. Especially downtown Bikini Bomb, we saw uh footage of uh like the early early footage of the snails and whatnot, like how they were different like they were colored differently, so that's pretty cool. But more importantly, the biggest thing I like to show on this is the still gallery. Let's check it out. Okay, so this is the same as the GameCube version, but still, it's like, it's always really cool to revisit this because it's literally early, uh, early photos of the actual show. So, it's always really awesome to see this. So yeah, we got a very old picture of Spongebob's, or early drawing, I mean, of Spongebob's house. It's just all sorts of really cool stuff, like, way, way before the show even started. So it's it's always a, a joy to see these. I can't even remember if I commentated on the original time I showed this because I know I showed the GameCube version, but I think I showed it originally for the walkthrough, and that was uh, um, several years ago. So I can't remember if I commentated over it or not. But I think I I kind of just uh, showed it for the for the walkthrough and for the original Let's Play. Yeah, 1996, when that photo was made. Or, photo drawing. Oh, there's a, yeah, footage of Reef Blower actually before, in Bubble Stand. Or footage? What the hell? Pictures. Or drawings or whatever. Yeah. Home of the Barnacle Burger. Good times. Created by Steven Hillenburg. We'll miss you, man. Always will. So, that's literally it. That's all I can show. So, I will see you guys in Battle for Bikini Bomb next time, y'all. Uh, but in the meantime, enjoy your episode of either... DK64 or Barnyard tomorrow. I think actually tomorrow you'll be getting the first episode of DK64. Or the final episode of Barnyard, either one. Actually, yeah, tomorrow's gonna be DK64. I know that for sure, actually. So see you guys tomorrow for DK64. See you guys the day after for Battle for Bikini Bomb on Xbox. 
I'm very excited to play that game again for you guys, and I'm so glad that I'm actually doing these two games back-to-back, -back, because these are both really great games. Well, at least they're both really great in my opinion, this game especially. Well, Dolphin Bomb especially, but this game is also still pretty good in my opinion. Alright, you get the idea. Thank you guys again. Goodbye. Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode of Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. I'd like to give a special shout out to currently my only patron, JC the Texas Scratcher. If you like what you see, consider su supporting me on Patreon and subscribing and clicking like button for notifications. See you guys in the next video tomorrow. Bye.